Hi, my name is Samuel DeBoards, and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about container-grown cannabis sativa for essential oils. So in Louisiana, we've had some um, serious issues with field-grown hemp, disease, water in the field, and inability to drain those fields. And so we're, we're expecting a large movement towards container-grown cannabis sativa in Louisiana. And so that is the topic of my research. The first thing I want to walk you through is the setup so that you can help guide farmers in making this transition to high tunnel grown cannabis. So high tunnels um, are only going to have the, the covering over the top of the greenhouse. And under those, we, we recommend that farmers use a drip irrigation system. And the reason we're going to recommend that is not only because it's in containers, but, but because we want to really minimize leaf wetness in the cannabis. So as far as fertilization, we do want to fertigate daily with cannabis sativa. Uh, we have seen exponential increases in growth with daily fertigation, and a lot of farmers are gonna have the desire to fertigate weekly. They're not going to see the reward if they, fertil if they fertilize weekly. We wanna inject a 1500 with the 51226 and two separate uh, stock tanks into our daily irrigation. For spacing, we want to maintain at least 48 inches between pot centers. That's going to uh, really help with decreasing the amount of disease that you're going to see under these high tunnels. As far as pruning and trellising, we're not going to offer any recommendations, especially for outdoor uh, grown cannabis, just because of the labor demands. And so with that, I'll carry you into the findings of this research. So as far as pot size, we are going to currently recommend a number 20 size pot for cannabis that is grown, being planted before July. All right, so the current, the current pot size is coming from the difficulties that we have faced with number 15 and number 10 size pots with containing the root ball post 10 weeks and the stand of the plant being able to remain standing under the high tunnel. A lot of the times with these number 10 and number 15 pots, we're having the plants blow over almost daily. As far as plant date, we're going to recommend that if the grower is not using an auto flower variety, that they wait to plant until after July because the Louisiana photo period, the natural photo period in Louisiana is not gonna allow for the transition of reproductive growth uh, before 14 weeks if planted before. And we want to, either encourage the use of that autoflower variety in May and June, or if you're going to plant in July, then we would encourage the use of a natural variety. For plant density, we're going to recommend right now only one plant per pot. Now, some farmers have expressed concern in increasing yield, planting two plants per pot. Our findings are currently showing that it is uh, more practical to put one plant per pot. As far as media comparisons, we currently have Fox Farms Ocean Mix compared to the LSU Garden Grow Mix. And we have not found any significance in the difference between those. However, we did see an increased rate of growth in the early stages with the LSU Garden Grow. For pot color, we compared white to black pots and we saw a 15 degree difference in both pot surface temperature and substrate temperature. It did not affect the overall growth, but we have not yet analyzed whether it is affecting the mycorrhizae communities in the soil. So we are currently recommending that growers stay with the industry standard of a black pot. Last season, we experienced disease pressure from southern blight, and this disease pressure was very extreme to the point where it was devastating entire farms. At LSU, we experienced up to 50% losses from southern blight or sclerotium rossi. We made this move to containers also to help mitigate disease pressure. In containers, we have only had uh, 0.008 incidents of southern blight. That was in the, in the way of about two inoculated plants. However, we have discovered a new disease, as you can see right here in Louisiana. This is the first time that it has been identified in Louisiana on cannabis, and that is stem canker or botryodiplodia. All right, the telltale sign for this disease is going to usually, and you won't see this here, but usually it'll be the um, central leader 
will begin a strong die back towards, towards the base of the plant. And it'll look a lot like this with necrotic tissue showing throughout the stem. And there may be multiple, multiple stems showing these symptoms. This disease has proven to be very, very deadly in our systems and in our current study it has wiped out over 80 percent of the plants so being able to identify this in the field identify it early when you first see the onset of necrosis at the tip of the central leader you remove that plant so that you can mitigate its spread all right lastly i would like to give you a short refresher on the signs and symptoms of southern blight so as far as symptomology with southern blight we're going to see a droopiness of the leaves it's going to be uniform across the plant as the, disease, as the disease progresses until the plant is fully necrotic. As far as signs, you will see a mycelium that appears to be like a spider web along the base of the stem where it connects to the soil. That is going to be the vegetative part of this fungus. And we're going to want to remove that plant when we see this vegetative part of the fungus. We don't want to wait until we see the sclerotium, which would be the reproductive part of the fungus, because that is when we're going to see a widespread of the disease into our growth systems. So far, there is no recommended treatment for southern blight or stem canker. And so the current recommendation is just to remove them from the field and to scout regularly so that you catch them before they turn reproductive. So that is a little bit about container uh, growing cannabis research here at LSU. If you have any questions, please do give us a um, shout. My email is sdesbo1 at lsu.edu. Again, my name is Samuel DeBoards. Please also recommend that your farmers re either reach out to you or reach out to the Ag Center or any of us here on Central Campus. There is a lot of bad information currently being used for the production of campus due to the lack of peer-reviewed journals, and we'd really like them to look to us as a resource. Thank you.